It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Los Angeles Chargers and the Minnesota Vikings. And it's all up next. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the L.A. Chargers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. Well, Charles, September is here. The 2023 season just about to get started. So many storylines to pay attention to. What are you most keeping an eye on as the start of the season moves closer? Well, partner, I'm glad you asked because we're going to start, obviously, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. That's a huge story. How about Kansas City? Could they win their third title in five years? We know some teams are trying to get there. Buffalo, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, San Francisco, all should contend. And how about some of those sleeper teams? I think the Chargers of Pittsburgh and the AFC, Carolina, Detroit, and the NFC, it's going to be an exciting season. Greg Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. So the Charger offense making its way out, and at the controls is the league's second leading passer a year ago. At 25 years of age, out of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. The Chargers just continue to improve and take steps forward under the quiet leadership of Herbert, who's been the most productive quarterback in league history through his first three seasons. Over 4,700 yards last year, he's expecting to crack the 5,000-yard mark in this season. Herbert. Throws left side, and I think the ball's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. As you and I both know, one reason teams script plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time. I will guarantee you, that fumble was not in the script. I don't think they had fumble written next to play one there. No, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. And so often when you've stolen a possession, as they just did there. On the first up, play. First play, picking up the fumble. The natural inclination is to attack, go after them big. Sometimes what you just want to do is put the ball in the hands of one of your best players in one of their favorite plays and establish your dominance that way. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. From the 38 now, here's a second down and four. Going to run with Madison again. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, and defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold them to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Throwing Cousins. And this nearly an interception right off the bat. An early crisis averted as that winds up incomplete. Well, it doesn't take any great analysis. No jokes, partner, okay? All right on this one. But we just know that we're going to see this as the game moves forward. There's going to be two guys on him on just about every snap. It's kind of a dare to throw his way, but they have to keep throwing his way. The benefits could be great. You throw it to a great receiver, he could come down with it anyway. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On third down, Cousins. Over the middle, and there's a diving catch. 15 yards down to the 15 and a first down. I felt that one all the way up here. 
How about that big man laying out and making that catch? Yeah, that wasn't a 180-pound wideout. That was a tight end. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Alexander Madison, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Uh, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Chargers get set to go here for their second drive. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them Get out there now and get some points on this drive. The speed of Jordan Hicks on display there as he gets the tackle for loss. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing in the line of scrimmage. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And Eckler will not get there. Great defense at the point of attack. Going to stop him short of the first down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Charger football to start quarter number two as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they'd really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Staying on his feet. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball. But he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Draw play, Madison. 
And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. He's able to chew up eight yards on the carry there, but still fourth down upcoming. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright, and the rookie, Darius Davis, deep for the Chargers. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's a pass swung out left to his run. The ball comes out, and the Vikings pick up the football. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but... I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. And this one nearly picked off. Well, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. Throwing his Cousins. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is the... And he's going to be taken down, back around the 35-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. So not only do you not get the first down, but you've also made things a lot more difficult on your field goal kicker. Yeah, they're still in range, but you're exactly right because you know the kicker's over there saying, thanks a lot, you just made my job a little tougher because when he kicks it now, he'll kick it lower because he's got to get more distance. That means there's more jeopardy for the ball to get tipped or blocked. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it on line, but it comes up about a rotation short. Well, he had that one on target. That's half the battle. The other half of the battle, however, is distance. And he nearly had that, too. But it was the crossbar that said otherwise, and that'll deny him a shot at three. The offense heading back out as we take a closer look at Austin Eckler. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard. Maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? And Marcus Davenport, former Saint, in on the stop there. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. From the 46, here's the second and five. Justin Herbert looking to pass. Throw it across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked by the linebacker, Brian Asamoa. And he will not get all the way home, but he will take this back down to about the two-yard line. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the sit. And he will take this one into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Alexander Madison with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. 
So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Joseph now to have the PAT. And it's good to make it 14 0. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Now, Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. L.A. readies for its next possession. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and ten. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He dumps it to Eckler underneath. And they work this well upfield across the 45. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw here, Herbert. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. 24 yards the gain there, another first down as well. well. These guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Herbert with it looking to pass. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. And Allen's going to have a Chargers first down as he's down at the 17-yard line. The Chargers going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Herbert throwing again. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Here's second and ten. Here's Herbert. throw there and it's going to wind up incomplete. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Herbert. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown Chargers. Mike Williams on the touchdown throw from Justin Herbert. And the Chargers are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, sure. heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed, and a lot of football, full half to be played. Extra point up and good by Dicker, and that'll make our score 14 to 7. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. And the Vikings going to take over here one more time before the half. 
And with a 14-7 lead, they might just be happy to take this thing on into the tunnel. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. With just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. Final play of the half, Cousins. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a running back, Alexander Madison, who put together a solid first half. He chipped in a couple of touchdown runs as he was running with determination right from the word go. Final adjustments being made in the locker room. We're just about ready for the second half from Minneapolis. And for the call, let's rejoin Brandon and Charles. Let's take it in right around the goal line. Takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Out come the Vikings, they'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 26. He'll throw from the gun. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now Cousins. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll be taken down the middle before he works it past the 50. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. Play action now, Cousins. He sets to fire deep. And got his man complete. Touchdown, Vikings. KJ Osborne, 46 yards. And the Vikings have taken a two touchdown lead now. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space that a guy of his speed needs. If you go play action, all you want is just a moment where the guy's covering take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by them. And once he's by them, there's no catch. No. As they always like to say, if a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. 
And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. And they get 17 more on that one and another first down. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Off the play fake to Eckler. It's Herbert. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. But I think the ball's out. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23 yard line. So it's a turnover there on the last fumble. And this third quarter could not really have started worse. And I think that's a great observation because this was a close game at the half. They gave up the touchdown in the opening drive. Now they turn over the football. This game, they can get away from pretty quickly if their defense doesn't step up right here. And now out comes Minnesota. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up. And that's caught inside the 30. A big play there for Minnesota. 52 yards. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead for those other guys. They've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach. And that's a strong step towards getting it done. So that changes things in a big way. Now from all the way down inside the 30, here's first and 10. On the handoff, it's Madison down to about the 23. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right pass. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. Throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Joseph's got it, and that will extend their lead even further. So that almost certainly the final piece to this puzzle, a three-score lead. I don't think there's any coming back from there. Well, you know normally I get on you for giving up on the game right here, but I do think you're right in this case. This late in the game, two scores is tough enough. Three, I'm with you. That seems out of the question. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. Yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because... They're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how. And he loses the football a second time. And this is going to get out of bounds. So they will gain a bit of yardage on the play, actually. And they'll hold on to the football as well. Second time he's fumbled in this game. Fortunate for him, this one goes out of bounds. And the key for him now is how much equity have you built up with your coaching staff? How much equity have you built up with your team to continue to get opportunities? Fortunate that one went out of bounds. Saved him from a turnover. Herbert back to the air. And Eckler is going to pick up a Chargers first down as he'll get this down to the 47-yard line. 
And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. And oh my goodness, he loses it again. And this will get out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. So fortunately, they're able to hold on to the possession. Offensively, they're just not playing a very clean football game right now. This deficit, there's a fumble. Good news for them, at least, that went out of bounds. You're exactly right. And as they breathe a sigh of relief, you know they're looking at the scoreboard, thinking to themselves, if we turn it over there, things could really get rough for us trying to make a comeback in this game. On second down, here's Herbert. Well, this is caught by Williams. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. That is caught. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Gerald Everett from three yards out. And the Chargers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. The well, fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Vikings able to recover. The hands team does its job. The risk reward of the onside kick. When you don't get it, the risk comes out to play. And here they gave up great field position. And that's the key to everything because you're trying your best to press advantages when you have them. And field position leads you to that type of play calling. And whether you want to blitz or whether you want to throw the ball deep, those types of things, now that they've given up that type of field position, the advantage has switched to their opponent. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Here's Madison running on first down. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, they run with Madison. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Chargers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another carry now for Madison. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Cousins. two scores in the fourth quarter and you're going to throw the football, expect to see a lot of man coverage because usually what comes along with man coverage is pressure. So if you're a play caller and you want to keep throwing the football, that's fine. Just make sure your offensive line understands they're going to get additional guys running at the quarterback. Well, they 
They probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. Madison. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the 